Former President Donald Trump outlined his vision for the economy during a campaign event in Savannah, Georgia today. It's part of his campaign's push to win over voters in the highly coveted battleground state. Trump slammed the Biden administration, blaming President Biden and Vice President Harris for what he claims is the highest inflation rate in the country's history. Well, while year-over-year -year inflation peaked at 9 percent in June of 2022, that was the highest monthly figure in about 40 years, but not the highest ever. The U.S. saw inflation rates between 12 and 14 percent in the 70s and 80s. Trump went on to tell voters how he plans to bring manufacturing back to the U.S. if elected president. So as your president, here is the deal that I will be offering to every major company and manufacturer on Earth. I will give you the lowest taxes, the lowest energy costs, the lowest regulatory burden, and free access to the best and biggest market on the planet. But only if you make your product here in America. It all goes away if you don't make your product here and hire American workers for the job. He said his position will bring back businesses and also bring back manufacturing and said that those businesses who don't conform will be forced to pay substantial tariffs on their goods. Tomorrow, Trump heads to North Carolina before ending his week in Michigan. And tomorrow, Vice President Harris is expected to unveil additional components of her economic plan at an event in Pittsburgh. We've also learned her campaign is considering visiting the U.S.-Mexico border for the first time since Harris was named the Democratic presidential nominee. She's scheduled to stop in Arizona on Friday. CBS News campaign reporter Olivia Rinaldi is on the campaign trail with Trump in Savannah, Georgia. Earlier, she spoke to CBS News about the campaign's strategy in battleground states. People on the Trump campaign that I talked to, when talking about, you know, what are the targeted messages in each battleground state, right? When they're in Pennsylvania, they have a little bit more of a tweaked focus on fracking and energy policies. But when you come to Georgia, what does it look like? And they told me high prices and inflation. Those are the two things that they focus on here because Georgia really has been a hotbed for inflation across the country. A lot of people moved here during the pandemic. Prices spiked during then and have kind of stayed up and trended that way. So they say that's their focus here today is really trying to get into the voters' minds that prices are high and Donald Trump's campaign is the one that is uh, most benefited to fix it. CBS News political director Finn Gomez is in Washington following the Harris campaign for us. So, Finn, more than 400 economists and economic policy experts endorsed Harris today. But still, she says she's going to unveil another economic speech. She's expected to give it tomorrow in Pittsburgh. What will we hear from her and how are battleground voters responding to this economy messaging so far? Yeah, Lindsay, two things. It's, it's essentially right now a, a tale of two dueling economic speeches. The one from Trump today that you just got into with Olivia, but also uh, Harris tomorrow in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Uh, what we're being told uh, by sources close to the campaign is that uh, she's really going to expand on her this notion, or really her platform, her proposal for an opportunity economy. economy. We've heard a lot about that from Vice President Harris uh, ever, you know, throughout the cycle, but ever, ever since she moved to the top of the ticket. Uh, we do know that she's been focusing on, on housing, on making uh, housing more affordable, on addressing the shortage on housing affordability, uh, and has, has proposed building more homes if she come, becomes president. And also, uh, a big focus has been on uh, the child tax credit and helping parents alleviate that, uh, that sort of financial burden that comes with that. Uh, also, increasingly, why Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania is a crucial battleground state, as you know, Lindsay, 19 electoral votes. This will be her 13th time visiting Pennsylvania. Why Pittsburgh? On the western side of, of Pennsylvania, it's more of a concentrated uh, amount of Trump support in the Keystone State. However, in Pittsburgh itself, in the city of Pittsburgh, she really needs turnout there. She needs her supporters to come out and support her uh, on Election Day to, to give, you know, to really be the most competitive that she can possibly be in that battleground state. We're 42 days out, Lindsay. Our latest CBS tracking poll shows that it is a dead heat in Pennsylvania and the stakes could not be more higher. It is interesting to see where they're focusing the messaging. I mean, the economic men message that we just talked about. Also, Harris, CBS News can report, is considering a trip to the southern border this week. Her first trip there as vice president 
It was back in August of 2021 when she visited El Paso, Texas. Does that sort of tell you? These are typically two issues that she doesn't pull as high on as Trump, although she has made recent gains, according to a CBS News poll on the economic messaging. But are you also picking up on sort of this is the final stretch and these are the two focuses that we're seeing at least this week? Yes, in a nutshell, yes. This this election has become uh, centered around two main central issues that we keep seeing over and over again, and not just in Pennsylvania, but throughout or Arizona, but throughout the political landscape, and that's economy, as we just discussed, and also immigration. Uh, it has been her biggest political vulnerability, as we did have seen historic rises in unauthorized crossings during the Biden administration. However, in both the economy and both immigration, the numbers have improved for uh, the, it's they, they've they've lessened the amount of uh, according to data from the from the DHS that there have been less of these unauthorized crossings uh, at the border. And by going to Arizona, I was told by a top senior top Democrat in Arizona that she needs to do essentially uh, do some political jujitsu on this on hmm. this key issue going wait, down wait, wait. to What's the border. What's political jujitsu? <laughs> I, I, one of my favorite terms. I love it. I use it all the time, Lindsay. But it's taking an issue and flipping it on its back. An issue that seems like a weakness for one person, you flip it on, on its back and it becomes a strength. By going to the border, uh, she's going at the center of where uh, Republicans have really attacked her for, uh, again, her tie, her, her, she, she is the vice president in the Biden administration, but also it's something where she can blame Republicans, she can blame Donald Trump for essentially uh, imploding the deal on the Hill. Um, and also at the same time, they can't say she has not been to the to the border since becoming the presidential nominee of the Democratic Party. She's going there now. So I think that again, that politi political political jujitsu that I just mentioned could be happening. At least that's what they're trying for, Lindsay. Ben Gomez, thank you.